Hey again, everybody. So, believe it or not, different languages have different sounds. Therefore, a problem kind of arises when you're attempting to compare two different languages, especially if they both use the same writing system. For example, the Chinese word shu, pardon my pronunciation, and the Japanese word shu are both spelt the same, but are pronounced completely differently. So, in the 19th century, the International Phonetic Association decided to devise a single unified writing system for writing all human languages. The first version of it was published in 1888, but it has experienced a lot of revisions since then. I won't go into all the flaws and limitations of the original, but it was basically only good for writing French and English in a kind of phonetic way. Because linguists were actually using it to write other languages, a uh, serious expansion took place in the 1890s, and minor expansions occurred throughout the 20th century. Eventually, the international phonetic alphabet grew and really confusing. So, in 1989, the Kiel Convention was held to sort of, you know, clean it up. After that, a few more symbols have been added, like in 2005, they added this one. In 1991, an extended version came out. It's speech impediments or other abnormalities that don't normally occur in human language. It acted like a sort of makeshift cover-up for some of the flaws in the standard EPA also. For example, in the standard version, there's no way to distinguish between plain and tense consonants in languages like Korean. So linguists just use a diacritic from the extended version. Sort of like that. The alphabet has symbols for consonants and vowels, but also has diacritics, like that one, which help indicate, you know, little details, and it has super, super segmentals. These indicate things like tone. Alright, so the consonants are divided into two sections, pulmonic, which occur with initiation from the lungs, and non-pulmonic, which are significantly less common, existing in about 30% of languages. Next time, I'll go into more detail about the specific symbols of the IPA, why they're organized the way that they are, and certain aspects of actually using the International Phonetic Alphabet to describe the many wonderful human languages that allow you to have a computer and everything else ever, and more importantly, allow me to actually have a job. I'll see you next time.